Hello everyone, we're going to have fun today. We're going to make a game called Sabotage, which is based on an old Apple II game back in the 80s called Sabotage. And it's a very simple game. It's pretty fun. The idea is you have a cannon in the center and helicopters fly over dropping paratroopers. Every time you take a shot, you lose one point. Every helicopter you shoot down, you get five points, and every paratrooper you shoot down, you get two points. It's a fun little game, and we're going to duplicate it in Unity. What you're going to need is the images files from the website. My website is millsgamedev.com, and you go to the download section, and there's a section for sabotage. There is a zip file to download with the images. Once you download the images, you'll get a folder, and inside the folder should be eight files. These files will be used inside the game. Let's launch Unity. Inside the Unity Hub, we're going to create a new project. The project will be a 2D project, so select the 2D option, and we're going to give it the name Sabotage. Now remember this location. This is where we're going to drill down to to find the project folder which we are going to create because we're going to copy the images into it. So let's create this project. Okay, our project is created. Now let's minimize Unity. Let's go to the project folder. In Unity, you'll find projects. And here is the sabotage folder we just created. Let's open up that. And then we'll open up the assets. Drag the images folder into the assets folder. Now back in Unity. Once inside Unity, you'll see the images folder in the assets tab. Double click on the images folder. And here are all the images. Now let's select them by holding down control A. And in the inspector on the right hand side, you'll see the values for the images, and we're going to change the pixels per unit to be 72. Once you've made that change, scroll down to the bottom and hit apply. This will change all the images to 72 pixels per unit. So let's create the scene. Up at the top here, we have our game view, since the game tab is selected. Make sure that the display is set to 16 by 9. That's the ratio we're going to use when making this game. This tab here is the Scene tab, and it shows you where all the components are on the screen. Now you can use the hand to move the scene around so you can see different parts of the scene. You can quickly get to that by holding down the Alt key. You can also zoom in and out easily with the Alt key held down by using the mouse wheel. Let's take a look at the grid lines here. Right at the center is the zero, zero point. And along the X axis, we have these grid lines. There are nine grid lines this direction and nine grid lines this direction. We have five in this direction and five in this direction. So this is the coordinate system we use to define where objects are on the scene. So under Asset Images, I want you to take the grass image and drag it onto the scene. If you set everything upright, the grass should be the width of the viewport. Dragging the image onto the scene has turned it into a sprite. With the Rec tool, you can see the different handles in the four corners. This lets you change the shape and dimensions of the sprite, but let's not do that right now. Right here in the center, you see this round dot. This is the pivot point of this particular image. So if we were to rotate it or scale it, it would do it around this pivot point. Now you can't change the pivot point of a sprite, but you can change it of the image. So select the grass image and go to the inspector. Look for pivot point 
and currently the pivot point is in the center. Let's click on the menu and select bottom. Once you make the change, click on apply. Now our sprite has the pivot point on the bottom. Now we can easily move it to the very bottom of the viewport. Now you can use the move tool and move it by hand and try to get as close as you can. But to be precise, you can go to the inspector and type in the numbers here in the transform box. The position X box is for the horizontal position of our sprite. Let's enter zero, so it's exactly in the center. Our Y position is the vertical position of our sprite. Let's change this to negative five. Now this sprite is exactly in the center and exactly at the bottom of our viewport. The next object we're gonna put on the scene is the building. Drag the building onto the scene. Again, we're going to move this to the bottom, so let's change the pivot point to the bottom of the image. Select the building image, go to pivot, change it to bottom, and click apply. Select the sprite from the scene, and for the position, type in zero for the X position and type in negative five for the Y position. The next object we're gonna do is the cannon. Let's drag the cannon image onto the scene. I'm gonna zoom in close to the cannon image. Once it's a sprite, when I select the sprite image, you can see that the pivot point is in the center of the cannon. The cannon needs to swing back and forth to aim at the enemies. But if I use the rotate tool to simulate that, you can see that it's swinging from the very center of the cannon. And that's not what we want. We need to adjust the pivot point. So to do that, I'm going to move this cannon onto one of the axes to help me line up the pivot point properly. Now that it's lined up, select the cannon image again. And under pivot point, Select Custom. That will bring up an X and Y field for you to adjust the pivot point's position. So the X is perfectly centered and that's fine. But the Y position needs to come down towards the bottom. So I'm going to switch this to point 0.1 and apply. And you can see that it shifted the cannon up. But that's not really where I want it to pivot from. I want it to pivot from right here along the center of the round bottom. So let's go to that Y position and let's put in 0.3. And that looks pretty good. Let's select the sprite and select the rotate tool and let's just take a look at it. That swings very good. I'm happy with that. To reset any rotation changes you did, Go to the transform rotation fields and make sure they're all zero. Now we're going to move this to the center of the screen. So in the X position, we're going to set it to zero. And for the Y position, let's do this by hand. Grab the move handle and move it down till it hits the top of the building. In my example, I have it approximately negative 3.5 for the Y position. It can be anything that looks good to you. To quickly see the entire scene again, double click on main camera and it will zoom out the entire viewport for you to see. Now that we've added the cannon, we need to make it a little more exciting than just something shooting straight up. So we're going to put a controller in the cannon so that it will follow the mouse position and aim left and right. To do that, we're going to read the input from the mouse and calculate what angle the cannon should be at. To do this, go back to the scene and select the cannon sprite. And in the inspector, go to the bottom and select Add Component. We're going to add a new script. And we're going to call this Cannon 
controller. Now let's edit the script. So in the Canon controller, we'll see two functions, start and update. Start gets called once every time the Canon appears on the screen. Update is called every single frame. So our Canon controller will keep track of two values. The first one is the max angle, which will determine how wide the gun will swing to the left and right, and gun angle, which is the current angle that the gun is pointing at. We're going to put some routines in the update that will get called every single frame. We'll first get the mouse position and store it in a vector 3. The mouse position has an x, y, and z component. We will calculate the swing of the mouse by multiplying the x position by 2 and dividing it by the screen width. Then we subtract 1. So our mouse swing will go from negative 1 to positive 1. We will then calculate the gun angle by multiplying the mouse swing to the max angle. We will then rotate the gun by adjusting the transform using the quaternion angle axis function. So let's see this script in action. Let's go back to Unity and we will run the game and the cannon isn't moving. Now at first you think, oh, there's something wrong. Maybe there's something wrong with the script. Well, remember that value called max angle, which would determine how big the swing is? Well, right now it's zero. If we set this to 45, then all of a sudden we have movement in our cannon. Now, here's something you need to watch out for. I typed in 45 while the game was running. Once I stop the game, the 45 will go back to its default setting of zero. So make sure that you have the game not running when you make a permanent change to your script variable. Let's set this to 70. And there we go. We have a swinging cannon. The next step is to make it fire. But we're going to do that next episode. So please join me for the next episode where we're going to make the cannon fire and start putting in some helicopters. Please subscribe to this channel. Until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.